Right, welcome to this Tactics and Showcase video for Orcs. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Orc Battle Wagon. Uh, working on my Orc army at the moment, I have a new list. Uh, it's been proposed on the Plus channel, and uh, thankfully it's mostly made up of units that I have already. So I'm planning to try and get this army up and running at 2,000 points already. Uh, on the channel here, you'll already see there's a 1,500 point game uh, with the Orcs against the Imperial Knights using the new Codex. Uh, that will give you an idea of the kind of direction I'm headed with my Orc army at the moment. So uh, in this video and in this series we'll take a look at different orc units, try and look at the best configurations for them, tactics, how to use them and roll up some dice as well. And it's a showcase video also, a chance to see uh, the models that have been uh, painted up. So uh, battle wagons then, I only have one of them and it's sort of changed in uses uh, over time uh, but it's it's uh, the shuttle bus, I've called it. It's usually been used for transporting some important units around the table. So primarily, I think it's a transport. It's the main uh, use of the battle wagon here. Uh, it was like this, and then I, I from Games Workshop, you can get it from them directly. Uh, it's a, a plastic attachment here for the death roller. I just have since uh, painted it up, glued, and added that on. And now it's a, it's a, a very big vehicle here. Uh, just to give you an idea, there's a rhino. <laughs> you can see this battle wagon is pushing on towards twice the length of a rhino. So it's a, a big model for sure once you add that death roller onto the front. So uh, we'll zoom in a little bit here. There's not too much zooming in to do because this model's so big, but just to give you uh, a look at this model here. So uh, there it is, that's the side view here, and then the front. Uh, there's a fair bit of painting involved here. Uh, one of the tricks to saving a lot of time uh, is to spray the whole model in silver. That gives you just your base color. Uh, and then matte varnish spray over the top just to let the washes settle on nicely. And then I, I just pick out panels. So I've gone for checkered pattern here, uh, black, one of the predominant colours, and some red as well. And you'll notice that I leave most of the panels and just shade them in with the washes uh, and then just pick out some of the panel work. And that saves loads of time. So no having to paint all the panels, which can take ages. You're just picking out uh, a few key ones and sort of doing more around the sort of front area of the vehicle. You'll see a higher concentration of painting on there and less important areas like the deck here, at the side, and at the back. Uh, there's less. I have the panels being painted, but that just gives you an idea of how the vehicle looks. I love the death roller, it's a fantastic upgrade to take. And uh, then these turrets, they'll come off. So the big shooters on here, this one. Another big shooter on top just there. And then uh, this, this is a customised uh, thing <laughs> you used to be able you can't take it in the current codex you used to be able to take um, multiple rockets now up to four of them and that used to represent that but you can't do it anymore it's a little bit redundant uh, but you can sort of justify using it perhaps as a kill cannon and it doesn't really matter uh, so these are removable if i decide to to add in uh, big shooters or not and there's two at the sides uh, now of eighth edition you can weapons can fire from any point on the vehicle so that's great the way this is sculpted uh, these aren't restricted just to firing out the side, uh, they can fire at any direction and from any point in the vehicle, which is great news uh, as well. So if, if you like the way this vehicle's been painted out, I'm really happy with how the Orcs have uh, come out here. Uh, on the channel here on YouTube there is a painting tutorial for the Orcs, I'll show you how to paint Orc Boys, so you can check that out. Same process I use on the Orc Boys is the same process I use here on this vehicle. And then over on the Plus channel, uh, the details that be in the description of the video below. It's striking scorpion82 uh, plus.vhx.tv and on there there is an in-depth painting tutorial for the Orcs and I'll show you how to paint one of the battle wagons, sort of a larger, uh, tougher project and I apply that technique to that vehicle. And, uh, the way I paint that battle wagon is exactly the same way I paint uh, the battle wagon just here. So it gives you an idea of the vehicle here. It's just a chance to see them in games so often these units but just a chance to zoom in and uh, take a look at the paint job. So uh, there's also this 
here as well this comes in with the kit the sort of the larger turret that goes on top so that mounts on the top of the vehicle there's another plate that's missing I've used it on a conversion I've made uh, it's actually I actually mounted it on here <laughs> so that plate should go on top of there uh, but I used to use these as uh, looted wagons that's that configuration on that one but that one usually mounts on top that's the kill cannon just that so uh, we'll take a look at the rules now there is a diversity two battle wagons used to be just one entry there's three different configurations you can go for uh, now in the codex so it's under it is a transport but it's under heavy support options now what we'll do is we'll give some uh, points cost as well so there's the battle wagon the gun wagon and the bone breaker. I suppose it depends what you want to use the, the vehicle for and you choose the appropriate uh, configuration depending on what you want to do uh, with the unit. But was the standard battle wagon here. So what you're looking at is a vehicle that's tough enough and plenty of wounds. For your average vehicle uh, this is uh, lots of wounds. So weapon skill and ballistic skill 5 plus uh, it's toughness 7, so it's just average for vehicles. You can improve that though. 16 wounds, that is a lot of wounds the opponent to try and get through, which is uh, one of the strengths of these as a transport. Uh, then 4 up save, which is okay. Uh, then movement 12, so it's as fast as, as regular vehicles. Uh, then that what's affected here is the strength, so it starts at strength 8 and gets 6 attacks. So even though this is a transport vehicle, you can turn it into something pretty deadly in close combat. Uh, then four to seven wounds, nine inch move, which is still quick enough. Plus remember you can add your advance on top of that. Still at strength six and D6 attacks. And then one to three wounds, down to just your last few wounds. Uh, you still get six inch move, strength four and D3 attacks. So, uh, the standard battle wagon comes as open top. So that means that units that are inside can fire out from inside the vehicle. So for the standard battle wagon, this would be useful, for example, if you're trying to transport something you want to shoot from inside. So, uh, tank busters, for example. You'll be able to drive around the table nice and quick, and then have the tank busters protected inside the vehicle and then still able to shoot in the standard battle wagon configurations about the best option. If you do decide to give weapons to the vehicle itself, it does have mobile fortress, which means this model ignores the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons. So you can move around, still fire, and there's no restriction to your shooting. You can go for Ard Case. If this model is equipped with an Ard Case, its toughness characteristic is increased by one. It loses open top, so you'll not be able, you'll not be able to shoot out from the vehicle. So to forget putting tank busters inside uh, and wanting to fire out of the top, you'll not be able to do it, but you'll get plus one to your uh, toughness. That is useful. Toughness 8 is very, very useful. Bolters, instead of needing 5s to hit toughness 7, or 5s to win toughness 7, uh, it'll be 6s. That is pretty significant. Uh, shots coming in through at strength 7, all the way up to strength 7, are going to need 5s to wound. A strength 8 shot, huge wound with 3 plus, is going to wound on a 4 plus. So it's any sort of las cannons and upwards that are going to still get the 3 plus to wound. So that it is very helpful to take that toughness 8 uh, if you're trying to protect the vehicle. So if you're running perhaps like a close combat unit and not really worried about shooting from the vehicle then our case is definitely a decent option for sure. You know I'd be interested in that because I'm, I usually run uh, mega knobs inside because they're very slow. I use the battle wagon to zip them up the table as fast as possible so the extra toughness 8 would be helpful in keeping that vehicle alive. You know if your opponent's struggling to wound, if he's failing to wound then wounds aren't going to be removed from the vehicle does explode, if, um, it detonates. Uh, great thing, this model can transport up to 20 infantry models. So you can get a huge unit of all boys inside. Uh, it's, a, it's a big capacity transport. Uh, you can take mega armor units or jump pack models. They take the place of two. So you could get 10 mega knobs inside, huge mob of them inside as well. If you take the kill cannon, uh, then you can still transport and it's up to 12, which is still very reasonable. That's your average amount for a transport anyway. So if you add the kill cannon on top. Uh, so, 
120 points to start off with and then start adding your upgrades on top of that. So you can take a kill a cannon, kill cannon or zap gun. So first is the cannon. It's 15 points. Which I think is pretty expensive because the chances of hitting is uh, 5 plus. It's unlikely you're going to get your hit with that. It's a decent enough, it's range 36. You can go for two options. You've got frag, which is range 36, heavy D6, strength 4, AP01 damage. Uh, it's, it's not that significant, really. It's a very insignificant weapon. The average number of shots is going to be three, then one of them is going to hit, and then you might cause a wound. That's it. So, pretty useless. The shell, though, is pretty good. Heavy 1, range 36, strength 8, minus 2, and D6 damage. I, I, I'm not taking those on my uh, battle wagon because I, I just leave that kind of firepower to tank busters, which are a bit more reliable with their shooting. So, I don't bother with that. Uh, you can take the kill cannon instead. That's actually 15 points as well, so it's the same points cost. I would say you may as well go for the kill cannon. Range 24, so do lose a bit of range. It's heavy D6, strength 8, minus 2, and 2 damage. So there's that one. But again, not that significant a weapon, really. I think there's better ways to spend your points. See, one of the aspects of these is to concede the fact that it's going to be a bullet magnet. It's going to get shot up by the opponent and so one of the things that I think is well why pay out lots of upgrades for something that's probably going to get blown to pieces at some point or quite early on in the game turn one turn two you know its option really is primarily is to transport the models up the table that's the primary objective and then after that it's a, a bonus really so don't want to invest too many points on something that's going to uh, be destroyed quite quick so I, I don't usually bother with a kill cannon you got Zap Gun here. There's another option. It's 18 points. It's even more expensive. Range 36, heavy 1. So it's only one shot. Strength 2d6. So that's going to be usually sort of 7 or 8 on average. AP minus 3 and 3 damage. So it's, it's powerful enough, but the ballistic skill is terrible. Before firing this weapon, roll to determine the strength of the shot if it's 11 or more. Do not make a wound roll instead. If the attack hits, causes 3 mortal wounds. And the bearer suffers a mortal wound. Yeah, it all sounds good here, but the ballistic skill is the big letdown for this. So I, I don't justify taking the zap gun either. So you, you could load it up with a load of firepower, but you, you're going to get hits coming in here and there after spending you know a fair bit of points. So it does get daka daka daka. So if you are getting sixes with your hits, whatever weapon it is, you are generating more shots. So that helps a little bit. Uh, you can take up to four big shooters. I found them a bit more reliable Because big shooters are very cheap. The five points starts at 20 points uh, You're going to get yourself 12 shots uh, You're going to get yourself some hits a bit of daka daka as well come more hits and then or shots at least and then strength five You're going to wound most things on a three plus AP zero and one damage So for the sake of 20 points picking up a couple of space marines is what you could expect from that during the game. Uh, so, it's not too bad, I think it's all right. So I had to choose between all of those, I would take four big shooters, I reckon, which is sort of the configuration I have on mine, one, two, three, four, big shooters. Uh, the model may take an hard case and or a death roller. So, hard case, we've covered that already, just gives you plus one to toughness, yeah, if, if the primary role of the, my one, the primary role is for it to get across the board. To do that, it needs to be as protected as protected as possible, as tough as possible. Uh, so that helps out. And I, I have a combat unit inside, so that fits well because they're not allowed to shoot. Uh, then the death roller here. I think it's 19 points. Yeah, it's 19 points. Now what the death roller does, here, it's a melee weapon, you get plus one strength, so you're actually at, at full health here, you're at strength eight plus one, so strength nine, so you'll be on threes to wind virtually, 
99% of vehicles out there, you know, in regular games, you'll be on threes to wound. AP minus two, so a three plus save vehicle is going to need a five. There's still a chance. Uh, a two, uh, two damage though, if it does get through. And then add three to hit rolls made for attacks uh, with this weapon. So five plus weapon skill all of a sudden becomes two plus to hit, and you're on a guaranteed six attacks at full health. That's pretty good. Uh, but there's ways of making it better. But uh, death roll on the front if you want to go for this option. So, so your regular battle wagon, sort of the middle ground, it's sort of you can gear it up for transportation, bit of combat, bit of shooting, it's sort of the general all round option. The next one that you can go for is the gun wagon. So if you want to configure your battle wagon more towards shooting, uh, then you can go for that. Uh, exactly the same. Yeah, this does have... Okay. Yeah, so what you can do is you can take 12. You can still transfer up to 12. And then you've got a uh, periscope here as well, this model. So you don't have open top, that's what I was looking for. You don't have open top tier. So forget about putting models in that can shoot out of the vehicle. That option's not there. Instead, the, the firepower comes from the vehicle itself, and then you can transport, say, like a close combat unit. Uh, periscope. If this model remains stationary or moves under half speed, uh, it can shoot twice in the following shooting phase of its cannon, kill cannon, or zap gun. Uh, the weapon must target the same unit both times. So you can fire twice at the same target. It's pretty good. It's a little bonus there. The gun wagon. It is pretty good. If you're taking one of the big guns, especially I would say the kill cannon, that's the most effective for that. Virtually looking at 2d6 shots, so you're doubling your output. Um, so if you like the idea of shooting, then take the gun wagon for sure. Uh, it's 140 points. You are paying for the privilege though. Uh, the battle wagon, 120 points, still the cheaper option. Uh, mobile, mobile fortress as usual. Uh, you can still t you can take the cannon, kill cannon, zap gun, up to four big shooters, and you can take orc items from the battle wagon equipment list. So I would say we'll check we'll check these now. Yes, yeah, hard case we've already covered. Uh, zero points if you pay for it separately. Yeah, so uh, Grot Riggers. Here, yeah, just find the entry here. Sorry, we'll do Grabbing Claw first of all. Uh, so, the Grabbing Claw is strength for the user, so strength 8, strength 9, A for minus 3, D3 damage, and each time the bearer fights, it can only make a single attack with this weapon. So, you only get one attempt with it. Uh, it's not too bad the damage come through. Problem is, I'm not sure why they've sort of done this, but uh, it's five plus weapon skill. It's unlikely you're going to get your hit. So it's a shame, but uh, it's not that great. One third of a chance of actually getting the hit uh, with that. And uh, that will cost five points. It is cheap. Yeah, it's a cheap upgrade to take. Not too expensive. So if you've got a spare five points, looks pretty cool as well. I think perhaps more intimidating <laughs> than it really is. But it does look cool taking the grabbing claw. I would say perhaps take it. For the points cost of it, five points is nothing really. So uh, maybe add that on. Next is Grot Riggers. Now, I think this is well worth it. Five points again. Uh, each they can attempt to make repairs at the end of the movement phase. If you do so, roll a d6 on a 2 plus, it regains a lost wound. The vehicle can only be repaired once per turn. So, you know, try and keep the vehicle alive for as long as possible, and every wound regained back really does help. So, I'd definitely add on 5 points upgrade uh, for the Grot Riggers. Useful enough. Uh, you can go for a lobber. This is a shooting weapon. It's 18 points. <laughs> Uh, it's range 48, it's good range, it's heavy D6, so it's not very reliable firepower, strength 5, AP 0, 1 damage, and you can target units that are not visible. I think it's a complete waste of points. 
18 points is horrific cost uh, for just a glorified mortar really so I don't wouldn't bother with that one for sure 18 points very very expensive it was six points perhaps maybe uh, then you got a uh, stick bomb chucker so that's five points for that one range 12 assault d6 again pretty unreliable strength 3 it's terrible AP 0 1 damage uh, this weapon can be fired if unit is embarked within the vehicle equipped with it I just it's very weak so I wouldn't bother with that one either and then you got the wrecking ball you can give this one to uh, all trucks as well it's the wrecking ball it's three points <laughs> extremely cheap very very cheap actually so again I would say worth taking I don't think you're restricted so you can take a wrecking ball uh, and the grabbing claw I think on the same vehicle as far as battle wagons are concerned anyway uh, but the, it's three points is nothing and the uh, wrecking ball here is plus two strength so it's strength 10 now you're fighting at with a battle wagon uh, AP minus one and two damage and each time the bearer fights it can make no more than three attacks with this weapon so so the way that's worded probably don't want to take the wrecking ball uh, and the uh, death roll at the same time because you would just be subtracting attacks that will go from that so really you just want to choose one or the other but um, make three attacks with that weapon the wrecking ball Again, problem is 5 plus to hit, which is a shame. So I, I prefer the death roll. You know, you're bumping yourself up to 2s to hit. There's some nice reliable. You sort of can rely on that then uh, when it comes to the assaults. So that's the upgrades then. Death roller for sure. Grot riggers for sure for the battle wagon. Those are the two uh, that I would choose. And that's the gun wagon option. Uh, as I said earlier, I think I mentioned you can transport here up to 12 models. So that's the gun wagon. The last option is uh, the Bone Breaker. So, Bone Breaker, uh, it's not open top, so again, it's toughness 8 for this one. This one is really for going on the all out assault and the primary focus of protecting uh, the models inside. So, uh, same options are all available. So, what you have here is the Bone Breaker RAM. This one is more expensive. So, uh, bone break 140 points uh, here. So, the same cost as the gun wagon. It's just paying 20 points really for the bonus, really, that comes with that vehicle. It's a bit pricey to add it on, but I, I think it's pretty good. Uh, so, the bone breaker ram, add D6 to the attack's characteristic of this model in the fight phase until the end of that phase if it made a charge. So, when you charge, you get D6 extra attacks. Now, if you stack that on top of the guaranteed 6 attacks, you know, you've got potential of 12, <laughs> 12 attacks there hitting on a 2 plus so uh, pretty good yeah so that's the option I go for at the moment I try and keep the points cost down because I know it's going to take hits and I try and leave the firepower to other units that are better uh, so that saves points sort of justifies not loading up loads of guns I maybe add on if I have the spare points the big shooter so it can do something so as it drives about it can just fire uh, a load of um, big shooter shots and then pay for the uh, the ram across the front, the death roller, just to make it a lot more reliable in close combat. It's great for killing characters and running them over and assassinating them, you know, breaking into the line. Perhaps you want to charge into a vehicle that's got some nasty overwatch, you've still got plenty of wounds left on this. You can charge this in first, and then other softer units can charge in afterwards once that one uh, has made contact. So uh, I, I like the idea of using these aggressively. Uh, the danger is them being shot to pieces, so plenty of wounds uh, helps out. Uh, adding on to the toughness definitely helps. Another area of protecting them, and that is using uh, custom force fields. So I've mounted a, this is my own conversion, this is a, a big mech on a war bike, and it's got the custom force field. You have something like this, drive up with these, 
and then all of a sudden you're granting, keep them moving nine inches, you're granting yourself a five plus inbound save. You know, one third of the nasty shots come through, so LAS cannons, you know, plasma cannons and so on. Those kind of shots, one third of them you're going to block when you're all up five pluses, and that will definitely help preserve these a lot longer as well. So that's a great idea. And he's a character, and he's on a bike, so he can keep up with the speed of this thing and follow it in and then add that layer of protection. I think it's worth trying to protect these whole way, Mr try and get the units inside uh, delivered to where they need to be. So roll up some dice in just a, a moment here. What I transport inside this one, it's got a capacity of 20 because I don't usually take the big gun, just take the big shooters. So you've got 20 models. Uh, my configuration is the Meganops. I take unit of four, so that's eight slots used up. Uh, and then, at the moment, I'm taking uh, the Pain Boy, which is useful for them, and then I'm adding my, my War Boss here, Gut Ripper, as well. So that's the bus that carries these uh, guys around the table. Still got plenty of slots left. So you, another use of the transports is you can pick up units that have lost their transport. So uh, a unit of Orc Boys, for example, stranded. Uh, there will be room to put a unit of 10 of them inside here along with all this stuff so you can see the kind of scale uh, of all the units that you can fit inside 20 capacity is huge so uh, but that's the primary units that I transport in with the battle wagon so then uh, the way I'm playing it is you're going up the board 12 which is fast enough and then you're doing your uh, advanced move as well, so your average of three or four. So nice and quick up the table. At uh, turn one, you should be able to get yourself in a decent position, try and survive the, fire, the incoming firepower. And then, on your next turn, you're going like this. You're disembarking three. As far as I know, I, it's, maybe you'll know this, you can answer this in the... Uh, comment section below if you have to deploy within three wholly within or just at the edge of the model is within three inches it makes a fair bit of difference we'll just say you have to deploy wholly within three inches which is there that's your disembarkation at any point in the vehicle so uh, we'll treat that as that point then you've got your move four inches and then if you've got a, a war boss nearby and it's very useful for these uh, you're then able to advance <laughs> six and then uh, and still charge so that's the kind of reach that you can get potentially uh, with those at the start of the movement phase so uh, pretty deadly then uh, you're looking at turn one getting into position uh, and then turn two looking to disembark and go for the kill so really you're looking for Surviving one or two turns, you know, if you don't get to go first, your opponent's going to have a chance to fire at it before you get to move. Then you move, then there's going to be more shooting, so two rounds. Uh, or if you get to go first, it may well just be one round. I think that's a tough enough vehicle to, to be able to absorb a, a lot of damage. You know, combining it with uh, custom force field protection, the battle wagon, I think, is a solid uh, transport for sure. So some of the tactics there, or maybe roll up some dice just to illustrate the death roll here, which I'm a big fan of for the battle wagon. So uh, I'll mention some stratagems in just a moment because there's some incredible ones that can really help uh, the battle wagon out. So we won't forget that. Uh, but say we've charged in here. You then get your guaranteed, just presume we're on uh, full strength here, guaranteed six attacks and then D6 extra attacks. That's the dream world there. We've just rolled, <laughs> I've rolled a six. That's what can happen. And that's when your opponent can gasp <laughs> in horror. Twos for hits, so all of them except one. <laughs> this is very good. This is actually amazing. Uh, threes to win because you're at strength nine. So, it's all good here. It's incredible. Fives to save. So it's not done too bad. But that is actually 12 damage. So it has the potential to destroy vehicles on the charge, which is amazing. Incredibly good. Uh, we'll do one more go. So, I mean, no matter how badly you roll here, you're guaranteed your six attacks, uh, and then 
four this time, so more of an average amount, but 10 attacks is amazing. Twos to hit is incredible, they've all hit. Threes to, and I still think it's gonna be really bad damage gonna come through here. That was a bad wound roll there, very bad. Still, uh, wow, God, doesn't happen very often. Two damage come through, so I'm just gonna vary. We'll have another go. So we've gone from one extreme to the next. Number attacks, five this time. Really healthy amount. Twos. Threes, this is better. We're quite average here. Uh, and then fives to save. It's good rolling, wow, incredible. So it's not gonna happen that often, but that is six damage. And that rhino's just gonna be left with four wounds, making a real mess of that rhino. The other great option is for taking out characters. You're breaking into the opponent's battle line. You spot a character that you could try and reach, and then you charge the death roller in just to try and <laughs> to try and run him over. <laughs> so, one of those satisfying things for orcs. Two extra attacks. Twos to hit. A lot of misses here, so the lieutenant might escape. Twos for wounds. You're at strength nine. Still, I think he's going to get away with this. Uh, fives to save. No, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been run over. So that's the end of him. Wait, how useful is that? Very, very useful. So that's the kind of option there. If your opponent's got a decent invun save or a very high armor, you're not going to cause as much trouble. But for, for medium sort of HQ options, standard bearers and medics and lieutenants, ones that aren't as tough as like an army commander, you know, one that's got an invun save and lots of wounds. But this kind of target, the battle wagon, is very useful. It's one where you want try and make sure you get the kill so you can't then just run off uh, go and get healed or hide somewhere else but to try and take the opportunity to hit the character and make sure he's killed so great option which I found very useful and then the other type of target is just any kind of regular marines you know five up save four up save three up save You're gonna be causing trouble let's say we run over these attempt to run them over Is that one? Right, remember, this is on the charge you're getting this. This isn't all the time, uh, but another four attacks. It's sort of a shock impact. You're looking to go for the, the wipeout kill if you can. Uh, twos. Twos to wound. All of them. Nice. And fives to save. Incredible. Hot stuff. Dice rolling here. Saved all of them. Uh, but three brought down. That's satisfying enough. You know, you've, you've easily paid the points there for the death roller uh, and caused troubles. Even the orc vehicles can be nasty in close combat, which is really good. Uh, I'll have another go. Three this time. See, it's that twos to hit. It's so good. Uh, twos to wound. Fantastic. A big, big fan of this weapon. Fives to save, not this time. That's the wipeout. Unit destroyed. Incredible. Uh, so, very, very useful. Yeah, and you've got your other Orc units doing their work, uh, but you're not just relying on them, now you've got a vehicle that you can call upon to go and take units out in close combat. So, brilliant. So it's, you're finding another use. It's not just spending out a load of points on just to transport, and that's all it can do. You've now got a vehicle that's able to cause trouble in close combat as well. So, very, very useful. I was talking about uh, going after characters. Great thing about this. It's the movement of the things. So you're sending your, your units out. So you've got this kind of situation here, like this. Uh, you're disembarking, like this, with these. And then what you're doing is then making use of the vehicle with its 12 inch move and making these kind of maneuvers so you're able to get around. And instead of them having to try and go after the character, you can say, right, I can send them into the line and send him around to sneak around, break through and try and take out one of the characters. So, you know, without that vehicle being able to do anything in close combat, you've now got to try and stretch yourself, try and go for some other kind of option. But uh, it just means you've got another resource to call upon uh, that you can make good use of. So, yeah, there's some, some crazy ones here. So, uh, ramming speed here. Use the strategy from your charge phases. Two command points. Select an orc vehicle from your army. You're all 3d6 for making a charge move of that in that phase. That is fantastic. Extra bit of stretch there on the charge. 
In addition, if this unit finishes a charge move this phase, selects an enemy unit within an inch of it, so you made it into close combat on a 2 plus, it's D3 mortal wounds. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, fantastic. I mean, maybe you're up against a character who's got an invon, so you can chuck in some mortal wounds against them, as well as all the other attacks that come can come through. So the battle wagon. It, it should be a unit to be feared, you know, it's a huge vehicle. If it's got a thing, if it's got a death roller stuck on the front, it should be something that causes the kind of damage that we're starting to see available thanks to the new codex. So I think it's uh, realistic enough. Yeah, the other one's um, the teleporter here. It's two command points. Use the strategy during the deployment. You can set up an orc unit from your army with a power rating of 20 or less, which is the battle wagon, in a teleporter and pad instead of placing it on the battlefield. Units on a teleporter pad can teleport down at the end of the movement phase. Set them up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches from enemy models. If you use a stratagem on a transport, all units embarked inside it remain so when it's set up in a teleporter. So yeah, I could transport uh, this and all of these guys inside and the worry of being shot to pieces as you try and move across the table is gone. You just deep strike in. It's uh, incredible. And it means you, the opponent doesn't know where you can turn up, so it's a great for ambush. Uh, whereas when you deploy on the board, he knows where you are and they can anticipate where you're going to go, but with this you can just turn up. You've got more freedom. Uh, and then if you combine that by playing, it's quite costly in command points, it's going to cost you a total of four, but if you combine that at ramming speed, when you deep strike down, nine inches away, it's quite a difficult charge to make on 2d6. See, that kind of thing can happen. You'll get a third d6, didn't do it there, uh, but a third d6 can help average out. See, that seven potentially has turned into 12, for example. Uh, 3d6, much more higher chance of making that charge happen. The last thing you want to do is deep strike in and the charge fails and stuck. So, 3d6 charge is excellent. Uh, you've got your mortal wounds coming through as well. And you can also play, on top of that, boarding action. Use the strategy into the fight phase. Select an enemy vehicle that cannot fly and is within an inch of uh, a truck or battle wagon. So say he has charged in for deep strike. There's still some enemy models left. Uh, any models embarked in the truck or transport, so that's these guys, uh, can make a single attack with one of their melee weapons against enemy units. So I can take one attack from each of these uh, and try and take on models as well. So they're not entirely redundant even though they're still stuck inside the transport. So, some incredible stratagems for the Orcs. Very, very helpful indeed. So, that's your options that are available. I think the Battle Wagon uh, is an excellent unit. I think if you're wise with your points, you don't spend out too many points because you realise it's going to be a shot at. I prefer to go for the tough transport and melee option. I think it's better. Uh, and then if you're clever with your stratagems, uh, you can make some really good use of this. I think the battle wagon is about as, as good as it's ever been now. Uh, with a new codex, some massive improvement side. I highly recommend it. It's a very versatile unit, one that can be uh, very useful in your orc army. But there it is, that's the tactica then for battle wagons. Um, leave your own comments and feedback. Perhaps there's more strategies that you know of. Think of the new codex here as well. Uh, ways that you use your orc battle wagon. What units you transport inside. And then those that are looking into tactics for orcs, perhaps new to collecting orcs, they can get an idea uh, from experienced orc players of how best to use this unit. But there it is, that's the tactics and showcase video, the orc battle wagon. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.